So Gless 3 is like a superset of Gless 2. It's got all the same features plus a few more. So on the Gless 3 demo, we'll be showcasing stuff like uh, high dynamic range, depth of field, lots of, uh, 3D textures, also uniform buffer objects, and stuff like that. So this is the old content. Yeah, here we're running it on a 2.5 by 1.6K screen. It's twice as many pixels as 1080p, and we're also driving a 1080p screen as well. Yeah. Yeah, getting good performance there, 30 FPS, 15, back up to 20, 36, you know, good performance at 6 megapixels. And this is the Glass free content. So a, uh, a few things that are different. Uh, first of all, 3D textures. So in Glass 2 mode, if I uh, make a big hole in the floor, you'll see that all it's really doing is sampling the same texture. But if I put that in Glass 3 mode, you'll actually see that with 3D textures, we can go from the top layer of sort of sand through some dirt and down finally to rock. Uh, and that's because we're not only deforming the uh, sort of surface, we're actually sampling into a texture as well. So uh, we've also got a few other features such as uh, depth of field. So I don't know if you notice these trees in the background there are a little bit blurry. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn the feature off and back on again. And that introduces the idea of there being a focal point in the scene, you know, around the car, anything further away slowly gets blurry. We've also got bloom as well. Uh, so the bar here is actually ref is generating a specular reflection. If you were to look at that with your eye or with a camera, you would see some of that uh, specular reflection wash over into the surrounding sort of area. Uh, but here, because this is separate geometry to the back of the car, that's not happening. But with Bloom, it's a post-processing effect. We can actually just, uh, wash out some of that body as well. Also self-shadowing. Here the bars are actually shadowing onto the car, which in the Gless 2 mode doesn't happen. Uh, and finally, HDR. So uh, there's like a, an exposure level for the whole scene. So underneath here, we're fully in shadow here. So we can't see any of the detail on the texture. If we drive in, then slowly the exposure level will adjust and then we can see all of the detail there. Equally, the opposite is true. Outside here, we now can't see any of the detail on the sand. But as we drive out, slowly that detail comes back as the exposure level adjusts. So it's a bit like walking into a dark room or you know, walking out of a dark room into a light room. So the key, key thing about this, Jonathan, is that this is the same underlying silicon, so the same GPU. But actually, as the games community moves to OpenBliss 3 development, the hardware's ready. That's yeah. really what this is showing. So as you get more console quality level gaming taking place, then the hardware's ready to support it. So this is the Arndale board, which is running this demo here. This is a, an OpenCL demo which is running on the GPU. We also have the Nexus 10 with a render script demo which is running on the GPU as well. Uh, so this is going to be the CPU version now. So you'll see the CPU load is really high, it's like 100%. This usually normalizes to be about 100% on one and about 60 on the other. But we're only managing to get two detections in a second. So as I move around, you know, it's having a hard time tracking me across the image. See, it's 100% and 60-ish percent. only two detections there, but we'll move to the OpenCL version and you'll see the CPU load comes right down, the GPU load goes up because we're now doing this on the GPU instead, and we're getting you know, around 14, 15 detections a second, it's high 16. But the CPU load has come right down, which allows you to clock the CPU uh, really low, which saves power, and you get more performance per watt on the GPU, as well as better overall performance as well. So it's so all round. Better situation. It's all, it's all about putting the work where it's best suited.